Howdy, and welcome to the Old West Traveler YouTube channel. Today we're heading back to August of 1881 in the hills of the Arizona Territory for today's True Tales of the Wild West. If this is your first time here, I'm your host, Scott L. Winchester III, and the Old West Traveler is all about true stories of cowboys and Indians, outlaws and lawmen, Native American lore, and more. So with that, let's get into today's story. The Battle of Fort Apache took place at the U.S. Army installation at Fort Apache that was established in 1870 as a temporary army base and then becoming a full-fledged military base in 1879 as permanent buildings were constructed along with a parade ground in the center of the court. Fort Apache is located about 30 miles south of Sholo, Arizona. Fort Apache is also one of the first sites to have a full division of Buffalo soldiers stationed there. In addition to the Buffalo soldiers, the fort also had a group of around 50 Apache Indian scouts to help with the treaties. The fort sits where the East and North Fork rivers of the White River come together, which has been said to quoted, the climate is delicious and the extremely well wooded and watered area. Fort Apache was under the command of Major General George Crook, who was a noted Indian fighter at the time. Now the Battle of Fort Apache was a result of an earlier attack at the Battle of Sibicue Creek which is around 40 miles to the west of Fort Apache, taking place the day before. Under the leadership of Colonel Eugene Carr, during the battle, the highly regarded Apache traditional healer named Noche de Klein was killed. The next day, a band of Apache warriors from Sibicu made their way to Fort Apache to have a revenge attack. The Apache warriors assaulted the fort, but they made sure to stay out of rifle range of the U.S. Cavalry. Several of these shoot and retreat runs lasted for several hours, until around sunset, when reinforcements from the cavalry from Fort Thomas arrived. The Apache warriors had just a handful of men, and running off on adrenaline, they didn't do much of any damage to the fort at all. The Battle of Fort Apache resulted in no U.S. cavalry soldiers' deaths, and it's unsure if any Apache warriors suffered any casualties. Due to the death of the great medicine man, Noche de Klein, the battle would bring the other Apache tribes together and join Geronimo for the war with the U.S. cavalry which would last until Geronimo's final surrender at Skeleton Canyon, Arizona in 1886. Today, Fort Apache is a historical park that you can visit and explore the Old West history of Arizona. The park has 27 historical buildings and ruins and remnants of the fort. There is a fee per person to visit the remaining homes and read the various plaques that are scattered about Fort Apache. The site became a school in 1921 and still operates as an elementary school to this day. Be respectful of the children while you visit the fort. In addition, the White Mountain Apache Tribe maintains a cultural center with several exhibits for you to learn more about the Apache way of life. If you enjoyed this story on the American Old West, please help support the channel by subscribing and liking the video. If you have a suggestion for a future video, please leave me a comment down below. And again, thank you for listening to the Old West Traveler.